Hey everyone, welcome back. I got in the new Palmetto uh, PA10 lower. Okay, so this is uh, basically a AR AR gun that shoots 308. Okay, uh, so let's take a close look at this uh, real quick. Now, initially, I didn't know if I would like this rubberized grip. Um, it doesn't feel bad in the hand. Uh, I had actually bought a Magpul grip to um, to replace it, and I'm not going to rush to do that. I might stay with this for a while because it doesn't feel bad in the hand. I'm, you know. So now, one of the things I noticed, and other people have commented on, the there's a little spring over here, right, that pushes up on the in, indent uh, to your safety selector. Okay. Well, you can kind of see that that spring through the grip a little bit and you can kind of see that it's a little bent it's a little bent out of shape um it's if you basically that's normal <laughs> i mean it's not it shouldn't be normal but it is right lots of people have said uh in other videos that 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 tiny little uh spring that pushes on the on the on the safety uh indent that's going to be visible and it's going to appear a little bit bent if i change this out to the Magpul grip uh, that shouldn't become a problem. Okay, yeah, that should look normal after that point. Um, one of the things to pay attention to is you can see out over here there's a much longer, like this part, this portion over here. I don't know what you call it, is much lower compared to a standard AR 15, right? So that's one of the differences that will stand out as far as the shelf in here. That looks the same. So I think that's called a a low shelf, or is it a high shelf? Whatever that whatever length shelf that is, that's um kind of at the height of the safety selector. I forget what the what the, what the shelf height is on that. Um, the, the reason I'm mentioning it uh, is because I know there's people out there that like to play around with coat hangers, and that's information that they would want to know. Okay. Um, so yeah, I wanted to give you guys a look at that, at that shelf. Interestingly, that they painted it orange. I don't know what the significance of the orange is, but there's some orange paint there. I mean, uh, I've never messed around with like these um, coat hanger auto sears, but it certainly looks like there's enough room there if somebody wanted to bend a piece of pedal metal that comes around the pin and. Uh, pushes down on the disconnector so that when the bolt goes forward it activates it. I mean, yeah, this the space is there Okay, again not having played around with that uh, Conceptually, I don't see why that 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 wouldn't work like certainly if you got let's say like a registered order order sear right that should fit in there right because these at least this the trigger itself is mil spec so that's the nickel boron Nickel boron, um, uh, you know, mil spec AR trigger. I did get um, a two stage trigger. I got it because they had it on sale or something like seventy five dollars. Um, and I do like two stage tr triggers. I, I actually got two of them. Um, I'm going to put. I have another AR with a two two three wild right. So it's a. Uh, I want to put it on that one first and see how I like it. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want to just stay with this um, uh, the standard trigger that they send this this nickel bar one and you know see how I feel about it. Um, uh, you know I'll, I'll talk about that more in future videos, but uh, I, I'm not going to rush to change the trigger. I'm, part of the reason is because I want to I want to put this this trigger first in another AR that I already have a lot of experience with. And that will allow me to um, uh, basically kind of review the, the trigger in isolation on the gun that I'm already familiar. Because if I just throw it into this gun, it's like, okay, how much of it is me liking the trigger versus me liking the, the gun itself, the way it was shipped. Okay? So that's why I'm not going to rush to change out this trigger. I'm going to leave this the way it is uh, for my initial review. Um there's, uh, and that's it. There's, I mean, it's got, as far as the stock, uh, Magpul stock, I had seen in some other videos where they had a locking one that had a, a thing that kind of, so yeah, I didn't get that. 
I don't know if they cheated me on that, but in fact, I'm going to go back and look at the picture because I think in the picture that they that they had posted, this is supposed to have a locking a locking stock with a um, with a QD mount on both sides. I, I I think that's what that what what the picture showed. I'm going to go back and take a closer look at that stock, and if that's the case, if that's what the picture showed. I'm going to send them an email and tell them that they cheated me. Okay, I want the locking stock. Although I, I really like these these Magpul stocks a lot, um, I would like to try that other one just because I want to see how that locking mechanism works. So it's something to keep in mind if you're ordering a P A P A ten, pay attention to the to the stock that they ship it with versus the stock that they show you in the picture. And make sure that they don't do a switcheroo on it. Okay, uh, buffer spring says. P810 on it. it, and I can tell it's seems pretty stiff. Uh, I did order another because it's supposed to come like I think with like a three ounce or three and a half ounce buffer weight. I did order a 5.6. Again, I'm not going to rush to put it in. I'm going to shoot it first with this. I'm going to see what the what the recoil feels like. I'll test out the 5.6 once I once I learn this gun and I get comfortable with it. And then, and then I'll see if I want to stay with the factory, the one to ship it with, or if I want to go to the 5.6. I ordered the 5.6 from Optics Planet. So if I find that I like the way it shoots with what it came with, uh, I'll just return it. That's the nice thing about getting stuff from Optics Planet. Uh, you, you know, it's just an easy return without um, any hassle. You don't even have to talk to a person. Um, speaking of which, if you're ordering any parts, uh, yeah, you like... If you're not getting them from Palmetto, make sure that you get them from someplace where you can return it because it's like just getting a charging handle, right? A lot of places will say like AR-10 charging handle, but I'm looking at reviews and then a lot of the charging handles, basically uh, AR-10s are not standardized. So uh, for I can tell you guys like, for example, the, uh, the AR-10 from Ruger, right? The S4, that has a much shorter uh, upper receiver. So that charging handle is definitely not going to fit here and vice versa. So if you're ordering part, aftermarket parts, right, make sure that, that they're returnable. Hold on for a second. Okay, I just wanted to turn on the scale. Let me put this on the scale. We already uh, measured the upper the other day. The upper came in at, at uh, 6 pounds, 11 ounces. Let's put the lower on the scale. 2 pounds six ounces okay so um i already let me get this tripod back set up um let me take off the ar10 lower now this is an a this is a and i'm and i'm uh, um an ar15 lower this one's two pounds four ounces right so the ar15 lowers two pounds four ounces the ar10 the palmetto pa10 right uh, lower is two pounds six ounces so there's only a two ounce difference here so all the extra weight is basically in the upper so i thought that'd be uh interesting to take a look at let me pause this and back you guys up a little bit okay so that that was the main point of this video i want to see how much the, the lower weight um because i already did an uh alert, an earlier video on the upper i can back the camera for this a little bit more hold on all right, so what I want to do now is I'm going to actually put this together for the first time. So we're putting this together for the first time on camera. Oh, I want to open up the tent. Oh, by the way, uh, as far as an unboxing, this is the only thing that's in the box, okay? So they just basically throw this in a palmetto box that has a cushion in it, uh, and that's it. So there's really no big deal about unboxing. It's completely dry, so... Probably blew oil this up just a little bit. So let's put this sucker together. Okay. So let's put it together. Yeah, there's a little bit of play between the upper and the lower. Not that that makes a big difference, but yeah, there's a little play. You can see here, actually, it's interesting. Might be some coloring from the table, but you can see here um, how this has the curve versus, let's say, like the uh, 
the knight's armament, or if you get the 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 the, the, the PA saber, that's going to have a slant. This one has the curve. I can see that this curve is, you know, so these two parts don't match up perfect, and I don't. That's not going to make any difference in your accuracy or anything. There's just a little bit of wobble there. Usually, I don't get any wobble. Hey, you together. Yeah, this one's got a little bit of wobble too. You know, it's one of those things that I usually, if I get an AR, it's like I don't do like, and you know, like basically, I I, I do review where I'm actually shooting the thing. Uh, this is so new to me, where I'm like kind of like savoring this thing. Um, and the other thing is, the the weight is the big thing, right? Um, I wanted to see how heavy this thing is going to be. And I thought that that deserved a video on its own because if I do, let's say, like I'll mention it again down the road, right? As far as the weight of the upper and lower, but it's, I'm just going to be like running through it pretty quick. Okay, so let's just now we got the whole complete thing over here. The uh, what scale timed up on me. So the whole thing, nine pounds, one ounce. So we got a nine ounce baby here. It is a, a big old baby. So let me just touch up, make sure that this, yeah, same way. I was just wanting to make sure that the front wasn't touching. So nine pound, one ounce. Um, let's uh, throw an optic on it, see what this thing weighs with an optic. I just pulled this off of my, one of my other yeah, I gotta loosen this up a little bit. Hold on, I gotta get key. Let me take it out. Pause you guys for a second again. Alright, so I got a hollow sun key. Let me loosen this up just a little bit. Now, right now, I'm centering it over the ejection port. Um, I mean, I'm going to, after the video, I'm going to take this off, put it back on. I don't know, because normally I, I, I center my optic over the ejection port. This receiver is a little bit longer, so I don't know. Yeah, that seems like it's a lot more forward. So I may, so, so, so that's an interesting thing. That is something that, uh, let me line this up. Yeah, compared... So yeah, it's going to sit a little bit more forward, so I'm going to have to bring it back. I'm actually trying to screw this, I'm going to have to measure the length of the receiver. It's 9 inches on the, on the PA-20, right? So the AR-10 is, uh, is 9 inches versus... Uh, Seven and three quarter inches. So yeah, there's a little bit of uh, there's a, there's a bit of a difference here. So you got a nine. The, the receiver is nine inches long, and uh, the two things that mostly make up that is number one, the magazine well is going to be longer because you got a bigger magazine for three oh eights, and also this section over here. It's like why the I'm curious why did they make that longer like that i don't know did they have to make it longer to accommodate let me open this up again i'm wondering if they made made the receiver longer to accommodate the lower or the upper yeah it has to be because there's nothing up here there's nothing extra back here so i'm guessing that the bolt needed to be longer for whatever reason so they, so they decided that they needed a longer bolt and that's the reason why this section here became longer. Because there's no other reason for this thing to be longer other than to accommodate the bolt. So, that, that, it, yeah. so yeah, so this this uh, 
this object's going to need to be pulled back a little bit. Um, now, one of the things that is an option is, you know, first of all, is, let's see, where's, the, where's this going to go? So here's the thing. The, the great thing about the AR-10, as I'm seeing, if this is the setup that you're going for, right, you actually have, it seems like we've got room. Because I got a room for a backup site here too. Normally on my on my AR-15s, if I'm using this optic and I put the magnifier on it, and this is big, this is the this is the 6X, this is the Vortex 6X. I still got room here to put a flip-up site back there. The only question is, how about eye relief? Yeah, that would actually work pretty good. Does work for me. The only question is, do I want to leave it like this or do I want to keep this optic that much forward? Obviously, the more forward it goes, the more weight you add. You know, the more weight you're shifting the weight a little bit to the front, I and mean, it's not that much weight. But but then there's a there's the issue of when you come up, what are you used to looking at? So that's just. Do I want to keep it there or do I want to move it back? I have a feeling I'm going to move it back because I'm not planning to put backup sites in, on this. In fact, <laughs> I'm not planning to keep um, the, the the red dot and the magnifier on this. This is going to get a distance scope, a uh, 5 to 25 by 56. That's not coming for like another four weeks, right? so that's backwatered. Um, so in, in the meantime, I want to keep it like this. Uh, because first of all, I don't want to get, if I'm getting a new scope and I'm putting it on like a, a, a new platform and I'm trying to review the two at the same time, it's like, okay, do I like the scope or do I like the gun? So that's why it makes a lot more sense to me. Get this off. It, it makes a lot more sense for me to shoot this gun and review it with a scope that I'm already familiar with, right? I've had this for several years. Uh, this way, when I'm shooting this gun, I'm just thinking about the gun. I'm not thinking really about the scope because I know what the scope does. So I think that's a good way to proceed with this. Um, but yeah, that's going to probably be a lot more comfortable for me if I move it back versus forward. That's not important. Uh, by the way, let's weigh this with the with the uh, optic on it. Okay, so with the optic, we've got nine pounds, ten ounces. Okay, so is that a ten ounce optic? Or nine? I guess so. Yeah, nine ounces. Okay, let's get back on here. Okay, I'll move it back. Obviously, I gotta go through a whole zero price. I actually, I, I slid it back a little. Let me see how I feel about this. Yeah, that's like, just like when I come up, that's where I'm, I'm used to seeing it. And that's where I like it. All right, so that's where that's going to go. Let's uh, go with the magnifier now. This is the vortex, so it's got like a different key. I'll loosen it up just one if I can. There we go. Let me see how I feel about that. Uh, I think that's a little too close to my eye. Because now, yeah, I'm going to have to go back to where I had it. Yeah, so I don't have the right, this is too close to my eye. So that's interesting how that changes now because of the different length. So this is going to have to go back up. Centered. And then this guy here. Before I drop and scratch it, right, like I've done many times with any gun or optic. Okay, let's see how this feels.
I'm gonna have to recenter it. No, yeah, the centering is off a little bit on the uh, on the magnifier. Uh, anyway, that's not a big deal. But that's that's a better eye relief where basically the back of the glass is kind of matching up with the charging handle. Um, so that's that's gonna be better. So that's that's where we're gonna be. All right. So anyway, so that's good because that leaves that leaves room for flip upside. So uh, like I said, this, with the magnifier, let's measure it now with the with the magnifier. Let's find it out. With the magnifier, we are at 10 pounds, 5 ounces. Okay, so that's a 6X. That's a Vortex 6X magnifier. So we're at 10 pounds, 5, oun 5 ounces. All right, so I have here a PMAG, 20 round magazine, not, not 25, 20. Um, let's measure this. So that's a pound and a half, pound, one, one, one pound five, uh, one pound five point eight. Let's say one pound, one pound six ounces. It's not a pound and a half. It's one pound six ounces. Let's shove this in here and see what the whole thing weighs. I'll lock the bolt open. It's, it's, it's it, I've got it completely loaded. Oh, uh, the charging handle. Okay. Uh, yeah, this charging handle that they come with are way too small, right? If you're going to have a magnifier back here or a scope, it's really hard to, to to get this. I ordered one. I think it was from Timber. Uh, I should have, like, read through all the reviews first because people were... I did see in the reviews that it, it, it was matching up with some AR-10s but not others, and somebody said that it didn't match up with the PA-10. Um, I ordered a... I, I don't even, I haven't even received that yet, but so that's just going to go back. I ordered the Warhammer. I saw in the reviews for that that people said that the Warhammer uh, did match up with the PA-10. Okay, so that's what this is going to get. It's going to get the Warhammer. Uh, these extended charging handles, usually I can get them for like $25 on the AR-15s. On the on the AR-10, you're about $75 to $100 just on the charging handles, on the ambidextrous charging handles. Okay, so everything is a lot more expensive. So the, the gun itself, I think the lower was something like $200, the upper was like $500, so it was $700, you know, plus shipping and tax. You know, no, 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 no shipping, just taxes. Um, so about let's say $730 uh, versus let's say $700. Uh, so if you compare like your if you if you're buying the uppers and the lowers separate, right? Because you, you pay less money that way because the manufacturer doesn't have to pay a tax. Usually I pay about five hundred dollars on the AR fifteens versus seven hundred dollars for this AR ten. That's not a huge difference for the gun, right? But the you're paying for it first in weight. There's a lot more weight on this. And then you're paying for it in terms of like all the all, all the accessories that you're gonna put on it. Uh, like a charging handle, uh, you know, that ends up being more expensive, right? So any AR-10 specific parts, if you want to get, you're going to want to, you're going to want to get like extra, um, like a lost and broken parts kit. You're going to probably want to get some extra, like extra firing pins, extra gas seals, extra, all that stuff's going to end up costing more, okay? So uh, obviously the ammunition's more expensive, the magazine's more expensive. Usually I pay $10 for the Lancers, um, the the lancers no I pay yeah uh, normally I pay about twelve twelve dollars for the lancers which I love the lancers the clear lancers the the clear lancers for this are thirty five dollars I hadn't received those yet it's a good thing that when I ordered this from Palmetto I also ordered one P mag I don't like the P mags because I like I prefer clear mags um, however uh, I kind of suspected that I if I just ordered all my mags from one place I would be standing here today. With, with a gun and no magazine to put in the gun, okay? So, you know, that's, I'm glad I ordered the the, the P-Mags uh, from, from Palmetto. So let, anyway, let's stick this mag in. Okay, safety is on. But not, I'm not gonna shoot it now. Not ready to shoot it. First of all, I haven't zeroed in the scope, so I don't know where the bolts are gonna go. I have to move a little bit slower with that. So the whole gun with the optic with the with the 6x uh, magnifier 
11 pounds, 11 ounces. Okay, so we got an 11 pound, 11 ounce gun. Uh, if, when we get the the the, mag, the the magnification scope, the 5 to 25, this is easily going to go over 12 pounds. Okay, um, probably close to 13 pounds. So this is a heavy gun. That's the other thing as far as because obviously, you generally you're probably not going to stay with a with, with a red dot on the gun like this. You're probably going to want a scope with you know a more expensive scope. So instead of paying let's say $300 for an optic, you're going to spend at least five to seven hundred dollars for an optic i paid seven hundred dollars for the one i got for the one i wanted so everything about this gun's more expensive so anyway right here i've got 11 pounds on this gun um and that's without with, with the standard trigger this trigger like i said was the one i got here was an extra 75 dollars so if you're going to upgrade your trigger they come in somewhere between 75 to 100 dollars you know that's going to up your price by a hundred dollars okay uh as far as this specific configuration over here what would i what um is there a point to this why go with a red dot and a magnifier um well this in this configuration i kind of consider this as a battle rifle right uh or more of that 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 uh battle rifle roll traditional battle rifle versus if you put a scope on it uh, it starts it starts uh taking more of a designated marksman slash sniper role, okay? So in this configuration, that's where I see this. You know what, with the extra weight now on the front with the gun fully attached, I can feel the difference in the grip versus the Magpul ones, which are thicker. Yeah, this is, like now that with a fully loaded magazine, I definitely think I want the Magpul one, that's just, a, which is thicker. This, this now feels thinner. I didn't feel the thinness when it was just the lower by itself. But fully loaded out, yeah. So that's extra an extra thirty dollars, right? So you're gonna want to upgrade the the uh, the, um, the, the the grip here. And the other thing I'm doing is I'm getting the ambidextrous uh, safety. When you're when you're standing like this, it's this is great. You know, this is easy to you know come up, flip this on, flip this off. When you're in a prone position or in a bench position, right? Uh, sometimes it's it's it can be hard. To reach that safety with your thumb so i'm getting the ambidextrous it was something like uh, i think it was 35 dollars i ordered a few of them actually for different for other uh scope ars that i have um with the ambidextrous one you can you can kind of reach it from both sides and your thumb even if your thumb is doing most of the work your index finger is kind of assisting so it's it, it's helping you flip it over now the on the right side I'm getting the shorter one, right? Because if you get the two, because they sell the ones that, where the safety is the same length on both sides. If you get it with the same length on both sides, what happens is when, you're, when your finger's in that straight position and then you flip your safety down, what happens is it hits your index finger, okay? Uh, so that's one of the things I've noticed. So if you get the one that's short on one side, uh, you, it doesn't hit your index finger and at the same time you've got that little extra you know assist so if you're in a prone position or in a bench position you can use this knuckle here to assist your thumb a little bit and, and flip it okay uh so that so anyway like i was saying in this configuration this is more of a battle rifle type of setup and now why i'm going to go into this in more detail in another video but why use why why an ar-10 versus an ar-15 okay uh the ar-15 does great i've been out to like 500 yards and i got i get nine inch groups with an ar-15 using good you know match grade ammunition i've actually been out to 850 yards and got hits okay uh so i can with a, with a standard ar-15 not with a, with a red dot but with a uh a very i had a one to eight which had a a um, um a bullet drop compensator on it out to 800 yards you know, uh, five at 500 yards, I'll get nine inch groups, right? 800 yards, I get like, I think I was getting something like two out of 10 hits, okay? Um, on the man size target, one out of 10 hits, 850 yards, which obviously is not, it, it is suppression fire. So, so with this, I can do suppression fire on a human, right? All the way out to 850 yards, and it's absolutely lethal. To 500 yards okay at 500 yards this has the same 
power has about 300 foot pounds of energy it's basically got the same power as your nine millimeter you know at that point blank range okay um so the purpose of this okay i see this kind of as anti-material okay uh this is what we use to stop the uh the mad max road warriors uh you know at, you know during the apocalypse okay uh so So this is something that you would use to stop a convoy of vehicles that are trying to run you down, okay? Uh, that's the role that I see for a, an AR-10, a uh, realistic. Now people might say, hey, the, uh, the, uh, once you get, you know, a 50 cal is much better suited for that, right? And absolutely, yes, a 50 cal would be much better suited for that, but, but who the hell has a belt-fed you know, my deuce, okay? Um, and you might say, well, no, well, how about just a, a Barrett, okay? Great, a, a six, a six $7,000 Barrett, okay? And how much is the ammunition for that? And how, and, and, and even the people that have Barretts, how much ammunition do you have? I, I talked to a couple of people that actually own Barretts, and they all said that they have about 100 rounds or less, okay? Um, so with, uh, you know, with, with, with 762 by 51 308 I mean you can buy a thousand rounds at a time okay uh, so so that's why I think this is a more practical anti-material um, and you know going go all the way back to World War II right uh, they were using 30 cals right on 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 trucks against trucks against lightly armored vehicles against airplanes okay I mean fine most of the American fighters had 50 cals but the Japanese, right, they had 30 cal machine guns, right? And, you know, they managed to, they still managed to shoot, you know, a number of, a lot of, plenty of American planes out of the air. So, so the 30 cal uh, is, you know, can also fit that anti-material role, right? So just remember that, the Japanese were using 30 cals, you know, as anti-material. So, um, so anyway, that's, that's the function that I see for something like this. Um, yeah, besides the obvious, you know, getting good hits out to 800 yards, uh, and I've seen videos of people out to 1,000 yards, uh, even out to 1,200 yards, okay, with, you know, match-grade ammunition. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I'm going to be doing a lot of videos on this. One of the things I'm going to kind of figure out is, because great, yeah, match-grade ammunition is really expensive at like $30, $35 a box. Um, I've... I, I've Ordered some at, because that's what I have here. That's what this Winchester is. This uh, M118 long range, 175 grain Sierra match cap. Okay, so so you know, uh, uh, I think that's uh, boat tail hollow point. Okay, so this is the good stuff here. Right? This, this, I've ordered a bunch of this stuff for thirty-five dollars. I'm not going to shoot this stuff here. Okay, what I'm going to shoot here. Is this stuff okay? Which is what's in that magazine right now, Tula. Um, I used to get this for ten dollars a box. I got a whole bunch of this. Um, so this is the stuff that I'm going to be using here. Um, I'm going to use this to zero in the gun. Uh, I've got some of this German stuff. Whatever that crap is, this is seven six two by five one. So there's some German stuff. Um, now, now uh, between 308 and 762 by 51, um, the the, uh, the the basically if your gun this gun says 308 on it, a 308 will shoot 762, but not in reverse. If the gun only says 762 by 51, it, you're not supposed to shoot 308. Okay, it, will it probably shoot it? Fine, yes, probably. Uh, but but that's how that goes. Like like 308 is the equivalent of 556 five, shooting 223 okay so so that's how so that's how that works now a lot of people will refer to the AR10s as an AR308 okay um, that's what a lot of people will refer to it because again it's there's no mil spec on on uh, AR10s I, I guess the closest you can get to mil spec is what uh, Knight's armament is selling right uh, for like $6000 uh, because that's Knight Armament makes the M110, and I believe that Palmetto makes 
a a, a, a PA saber, uh, which is supposed to follow that 110 pattern. Okay, um, so it's, it's interesting. At, even at uh, at a Palmetto, so Palmetto sells two of these AR 308s, one one uh, to the M110 pattern, and this one over here. This pattern, as far as I've been able to figure out is the this follows the d uh, uh the dps gen one okay that's the pattern that this follows um and this is the uh, the, the the pa10 gen three okay so it gets really freaking confusing uh you know trying to keep track of this stuff okay because i've been i've been like binge watching videos for the last few days trying to figure out what's what uh, and it's like, and I, you know, I live guns, you know, I do this every day and it's confusing the shit out of me. Uh, and, and, and part of the problem is like when you go to order parts, one of the things I'm finding out from, again, people doing reviews is, you know, when you go to a company that, let's say that makes a charging handle, right? For an AR-10. Okay. The guy that designs it is not the same guy that markets it, markets it, which is not the same guy that, 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 uh, packages it. Okay. So you can have... You know, you can have somebody t say it's a, you know, LE 308 charging handle and you get it and it doesn't fit the gun because, again, there's different people making it, different people selling it, different people packaging it. Um, so, it can, so again, if you're buying like, you know, aftermarket stuff for AR-10, it's not like specifically from the place where you got the gun, like let's say from Palmetto. Make sure you get it from someplace where it is returnable, uh, like... Um, uh, you know, like like Optics Planet. You know, some place that you you want some place that's like easily returnable, right? Like Amazon style, where you just go on there, click return, you print out the label, and you put it in the box, and you send it in without having to get on the phone, wait a long time. Okay, you don't want to deal with that, right? You want to be able to print it out. You know, pr you know, you know, get on, get online, get on your phone. I do it on my phone. Uh, you know, hit the return button. It emails me the return label. Then I open up a computer. I don't open computers up that often anymore. I open up the computer, print it out, slap it on a box, back it goes, okay? So that's what you want when you're ordering uh, AR-10 parts, okay? Or LR-308 parts or whatever freak they're calling this thing. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, again, uh, this is new to me, okay? I, I've got a shit ton of AR-15s. I can sit here and talk to you about hours about this thing um, in, a, in a probably in a much more organized manner. This is new to me, so I'm kind of muddling my way through it. Um, so, you know, thank you for your patience. <laughs> so, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all soon.